Sovereign God, raise your throne in our hearts. Created by you, let us live in your image. Created for you, let us act for your glory. Redeemed by you, let us give you what is yours. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We now will have the reading of the word by Grant Kistler. Verses 1 through 7. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before him and strip kings of their robes, to open doors before him and the gates shall not be closed. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places, so that you may know that this is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I surname you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Beside me there is no God. I arm you though you do not know me, so that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west <clears throat> that there is no one besides me. I am the Lord and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make wheel and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. <clears throat> Please join me in... Uh, reading of our psalm this morning, 96, 1 through 9, 10 through 13. <clears throat> Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless the name of the Lord, for he makes our salvation from day to day. Declare God's glory among the nations and God's wonders among all people. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols. But you, O Lord, have made the heavens. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before the Lord, all the earth. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful in all that is therein. You will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with your truth. And our second reading is First Thessalonians verses one through ten. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the Church of Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We, also, we always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers constantly, 
Remembering before our God and Father in work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and the Lord. For in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit. So that you became an example to all believers of Macedonia and Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we may have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. Word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere, and teach the way of God in accordance with truth, and show deference to no one. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. Word of God. You may be seated for the hymn of the day, number 841. Let every lift every voice and sing. <laughs>
It's not one I've ever sung before nor heard. Beautiful. Yeah. <clears throat> it's rather tricky. In today's gospel, the enemies of Jesus want to get rid of him. They previously tried to discredit him as a religious teacher, but it didn't work. He was way too popular with the people. So they decided to set a trap for Jesus, one he can't escape. And that trap was a cleverly crafted, no, yes, cleverly crafted question. A question that had no good answer for Jesus. If he answered it one way, the people would turn against him. If he answered it the other way, he would be punished for inciting rebellion against the Roman government. This got me thinking about questions. I like them. I like to ask them. You can ask around. <laughs> I drive him nuts sometimes. He's doing a project and I'm saying, well, what are you doing that for? Or what did you do that? Or what if we did this? I spent a great deal of my career as a journalist and a technical writer, and that means you ask a lot of questions. That's how you get the information to write the documents and write the articles. And I'm a naturally curious person. I like to learn about the world around me. I like to watch people who are good at their jobs work and ask them what they're doing and why. As a child, Jesus grew up in the Jewish tradition of learning through questions. When his parents noticed him missing on their return from the pilgrimage um, for Passover in Jerusalem, and they turned back to find him, he was in the temple talking with the priests and asking questions. Jesus taught by asking questions. There are some 300 questions that he poses in the, in the Gospels. Somebody actually counted them. He asked the Pharisees questions that exposed their pride. He asked sinners questions that caused them to repent. He asked the needy and ill questions whose answers would bring them relief and comfort. He asked, where have you put Lazarus? because he knew he could raise him from the dead. Questions are an easy way of exploring, learning, and developing. Some questions are easy, and throw out the answers if you know them. Who gave Joseph his coat of many colors? Yep, his dad. How many books in the Bible have John in their title? I didn't realize there were four either, but there's John, John 1, John 2, and John 3. Some questions are kind of tricky. What kind of large cat was in the pit with David after he refused to pray to the king? It's a trick question. He wasn't in a pit, but there was a cat. You are exactly right. <laughs> it's kind of a sneaky question, huh? Who says cleanliness is next to godliness in the Bible? Somebody say no one? Yeah. Exactly right. It's not in the Bible. <laughs> Some questions are hard. What book of the Bible never mentions God? The book of Esther. Some questions are damn right dangerous. Like asking your spouse, if I died and you could marry someone else, who would you marry? <laughs> or, if you could change one thing about me, what would you change? I guarantee you, ask those questions, it's not going to be a fun discussion. <laughs> what about asking God questions? When Rabbi Jim was here a couple of weeks ago, he mentioned his shelf questions. Things he wonders about that he shelves until he can ask God in person. There are a lot of questions I'd like to ask God when I get to see him, including, why didn't you give my dogs, cats, goats, and horses a lifespan as long as mine? Why does my body have to ache and fall apart as I get older? Why can't I just stay healthy till the end of my time and then I'm done? And why didn't you give us cute furry little paws instead of feet? That's a personal question of mine. Rabbi Jim wants to ask about tuna, I want to ask about paws. <laughs> There are questions I ask now in my prayers. Why won't you stop child abuse, wars, terrorists? I know God gave us free will, that there is evil and sin in the world, that God never promised us an easy existence. 
but doesn't it seem like you could just stop one or two of the really horrendous things that happen? Like Tevye said in Fiddler on the Roof, would it spoil some vast eternal plan? I bet y'all have questions you'd like to ask God. Anybody want to volunteer some? Or? Why don't we make? Good question. Anybody else? You're a private bunch, that's okay. <laughs> Happily for us, we can ask God questions. He doesn't get mad. There's nothing he hasn't heard before. Nothing he doesn't know. The prophets repeatedly questioned him in the Bible in the face of oppression and suffering. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7 say, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. That's one of my favorite verses of the Bible. Asking questions of God is not a sign of weakness. It's not a sign of a lack of faith. Questioning God is not the same thing as doubting God. Doubt is the absence of faith. Doubt implies that we no longer believe in his existence or his trustworthiness. Questioning implies that we have a willingness to learn and to grow. When we ask why, we're looking for an explanation of what seems to us unjust or cruel. Asking questions is a good way to learn more about God. Be wary, however, of asking like the Philistines, the per, boy, Pharisees and Herodians who sought to entrap Jesus with their insincere questions. It's one thing to ask God why, and quite another to test his goodness and existence. When the Pharisees and Herodians tried to trap Jesus, he didn't fall for it. Instead, he asked them to show him a coin. And as Martin Luther said, there he catches them in their own trap. They show him a Roman coin, a denarius, whose only use was for paying taxes to the Roman government. Being human, when we ask questions, we want answers. We want them now, and we want our answers to meet our expectations. But when you ask a question of God, you must be prepared for what he answers. It may be an answer you didn't expect, an answer you don't like, or an answer you can't understand. Scripture teaches us that there are many questions that we will not know the answers to this side of eternity, answers we are not yet ready to bear or understand. As Isaiah 55 verses eight through nine say, my thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord, and my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. So although we are free to ask God our questions, we must learn to live with the questions that do not get an answer. Sometimes we must trust that God will provide the answer when the time is right. This may drive my curiosity nuts, <laughs> but I can live with not getting an answer. Because we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Amen. Please stand and join me in professing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Creed. The Creed is printed inside the back cover of your hymnal. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Son of Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We will have the prayers of the people. With the, offering. the response after merciful God is hear our prayer. There will be a, a moment in the prayers where you may add your own prayers if you so choose, either aloud or silently. If you choose aloud, end your prayer with merciful God, and the congregation will, re will respond <laughs> with hear our prayer. Trusting in the transformative power of God's loving spirit, let us pray for the church the world, and all in need. Faithful God, your spirit animates the church throughout the world and binds believers near and far into the body of Christ. Equip us for the work of faith and enlarge our hearts for the labor of love. Merciful God, God of creation, you made the trees to sing and the hills to clap their hands with joy. We thank you for the fields and forests, oceans and rivers, mountains and plains. You know every bird in the woods, and the livestock in the fields are yours. Help us to tend carefully to this earth you have made for us. Merciful God, Sovereign God, your rule and authority is over the cosmos. As you once worked through the ruler Cyrus for the good of your people, Accomplish your purposes through the work of our elected leaders and public servants. Guide them with your wisdom and compassion. Merciful God. Caring God, your arms enfold all who are sick and suffering, including Bev, Frida, Karen, Larry, June, Edie, Marie, Francis, Jared, Kathy, Rachel, Lizzie, Bob and Kathy, and Janice. Pour out your abundant mercy and healing on all who need it. Merciful God. Amen. Almighty God, all our life belongs to you. When earthly idols threaten to lead your church astray, remind us that you alone are the source of our eternal hope. Direct the work of church treasurers, councils, and all who manage financial matters. Merciful God. At this time, you may offer any prayers that are on your heart. Hear our prayer. Everlasting God, the saints of every age have sung your praise and shared your word. We give you thanks for their witness and pray that we may join them as citizens of your unending kingdom. Merciful God, gracious God, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your unending love and amazing grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. The peace of the Lord be with you. Let us share that peace with one another.
My name is Roy. That's a good spot. Good to see you. Mm -hmm. Lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, to give you thanks, Almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, our Lord took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same way also after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he said, This is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The table is set, and all are welcome. Come to the feast.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you in life everlasting. As we give thanks for this meal of grace, we also give thanks for the offerings we have been given. Please join me in the prayer of thanksgiving. Blessed be your name, O God, for we have feasted on your word. In Christ Jesus, the joy and delight of our hearts, strengthened by this food, Send us to gather the world to your banquet, where none are left out and all are satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God blesses us and sends us forth to love our neighbors and the world. It's time for announcements. There will be no Bible study tomorrow. The trunk or treat is October 31st. Still time for you to sign up and come with your truck or car and you can dress up or not, you can decorate it or not, but bring candy. <laughs> It'll start at dusk on Halloween. We have the uh, October dinner coming up on the 29th. Maybe. Pardon me? 28th. Yes. Oh, yes, it is next week. Again, costume or not as you choose, um, there will be a dinner and then at the basket auction or pie cake auction, whatever you might choose to bring. Um, am I forgetting anything announcement-wise? About birthdays, anniversaries, or other reasons to celebrate. Nobody? Rough crowd. Oh, happy birthday! Can we sing to you? No? Okay. <laughs> That's all right. We, 
we completely understand. Um, we'll just give you our heartfelt happy birthday. Any other reasons for celebration? In that case, please stand for the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace. Amen. Our singing hymn is number 705. I'd like to thank all those who helped me put this service together, Carla and Ruth and Sherry and Kevin helped me on forgetting, uh, Susie and Liz. <laughs> it, it's a work of many hands. Go in peace, let your love shine in love and service.